Hello. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour and welcome to our channel. So we are My Private Paris and I'm Marie. I'm Bertrand. And we are doing this type of video every week to introduce you to Paris. And right now we are during lockdown time. Yes. So we have only one hour to show you around. So we decided today to, to show the third district where exactly. I live. Yes. And so Bertrand and I will show you around for about, I don't know, 40 minutes, something like that. Just exactly. so you have a little look around. Uh, but we have to make, I yes. think, yeah, this. We've got to put our masks on. But Marie? Yes. You live right across the street? I do. So I choose, yeah, guys, to show you exactly where I live in Paris. And this is my bakery, just right here. And you will see that I choose my location depending on the food. Yes. As here, they did have the very best, you see, first prize at the contest of the best boulangerie on all the region of Ile de France in 2015. But still, it's something great. <laughs> okay, so. I'm going to start with showing you what is behind my building. Yes. Maybe you guys want to see my building. So let me let me show you that. So this is my building and you can see my windows with just a little bit of flowers hanging. And below... You have to tell them, Marie, that you don't have an elevator. Yeah, I don't have an elevator. So uh, it's a I bit of sport to go to I'm your place. I'm on the fourth floor. Actually, yeah, it's complicated. There is Some a kind of four, floor four and a half or something yes. like this also. Yeah. It's, it's sign that we are in Paris but in a Paris that is more exotic than other districts because this is a mini Chinatown. Is it? Yes and we're gonna get to discover that. So you can see already Vietnamese and we're gonna see also Chinese restaurants and that's just below my apartment. So you have Chinese food all over the place and the best baguette Yes. of not the best baguette the best boulangerie the, the best, best bakery of 2015 exactly here they make a great baguette but they also make an excellent flo i don't know if you like flo i do but marie i'm thinking do you know what happened in 2015 also we started my private paris yeah we i don't think that's a coincidence the year we started <laughs> the best bakery moved right in front of your place <laughs> you're right 2015 was quite a year yes um, one of the oldest buildings of Paris. You can see just by the door that we are talking about the 16th century. The walls have very. Oh, there is someone. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I can't really it's a bit. <laughs> And you can see that in this very ancient building. Here they specialized in soup, huh? the pot. And usually, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty full so, here. So you come here, uh, I, you come here often? Um, I mean, maybe once every month, you know, just, just because there's so many different choices. So. so this is the street with all the Chinese options. And the old buildings, you can see uh, how they lay back towards the top. Yeah, so we are in the North Marais and this part of Paris is known for this Chinese community. Uh -huh. They're the very first one to have come in Paris and also it's known for um, jewel maker. So yes. We're going to see probably some wholesalers uh, in jewels, fabrics. Exactly. We are not very far from the gay community, also, and that's probably why. Just right here, you can see Tango. So this is this is one of the discotheque where Bertrand. I think you you did win there one time. Yeah. Well, friend. quite a, quite a few times. It's always a lot of a lot of fun. I like the uh, 80s music in the, the spirit is quite fun, yes. I actually have lived for uh, a bit more than a year, just around the corner there. Ah, in the street funny. called the Street of Virtues. Ah, quite okay. a name. <laughs> okay, so. It was a small, small apartment, mm -hmm. fourth floor uh, as well, but none of the steps had the same height. So it was very difficult when you were walking up because it will make you feel dizzy all the time. Okay. Feels like you are, you know, you've been drinking way too much, uh, but any time of the day and any day. Is that just an day. impression that you were drinking way too much? Way, way, way too much, think, that's an impression. I don't think it's the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you, we'll try, we'll see. So yeah, so this neighborhood is pretty interesting because it's uh, a, com a combination of very old buildings from the 16th century. For example, there is this alchemist Nicolas Flamel. Yes, that, uh, the one of Harry Potter. 
in Harry Potter, exactly, the one that apparently found the way to transform gold, uh, oh sorry, lead into gold yes. and to make this elixir of... Because the other way around wouldn't be a very smart way. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Exactly. So at the end of the street you can see there is something happening with this building. Um, so I told you we are one of the oldest neighborhood of Paris. So some of the buildings were not restored. Most of them were in the 60s. We have this uh, law that came out in the 60s to restore all the buildings in Paris and in France. But here, as you can see, what's some of them, happening here? Yeah, but the building is falling apart, and I can see that. And they are trying to reinforce on the base, just to be sure. That are you trying to push the building to help it stay? <laughs> exactly. This is this is pretty impressive. Wow. We don't have that much uh, structure in Paris, so that means really that's uh, probably one of the most dangerous. <laughs> Structure that is. Yeah, we can see also the, the windows at the upper floors are are blocked so it does not collapse. So wow. This is probably yeah from the 16 as well. And that was not there, definitely not there when I was living uh, in this in the streets. Yeah, you can see also from here uh, how it's just uh, leaning on the on the left side. And we are... Wow, indeed. You want to be careful. <laughs> so, starting in these streets, yes. we have already some jewelry makers. So here we have Horlogerie Bijouterie. So in French, Bijouterie, uh, that's jewelry. But it's going to continue all the way there. And then and we have another street that's crossing here. And that will be for all the walls, say. So that could be for bags. Pearls, also there is many um, merchants that are having all those type of pearls that you yes. can then, you know, uh, you can do necklaces out of them, of course. So it's not really a place where y you guys could shop if you were oh, no, visiting no, no. the neighborhood. No, it's only because for professionals. Yes. Uh, you can only buy lots, uh, for, for example, I don't know, it's a minimum of uh, hundreds of pieces. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's only for that type of uh, But I, I have a little tip for you guys. Because when I was living in the neighborhood, it's true that normally it's only uh, if you buy in large quantities, but cash is king, so if you come with a bit of cash, you can find your way so things eventually. Like that, huh? For example, so you see there is no prices because it's not for individuals, it's really for people who are... It's more like a showroom. Maria, I'm, I'm looking right here and we see buildings that are more familiar to... The Osmanian? Yes, so it's, there's a mix. Yes, in here. so that's what is great about Le Marais, uh, you never get bored, because every street is different, uh, in a way, but you can also get lost pretty easily. Uh, but let's say, yeah, for the architecture, it's very interesting. So here, typical Osmanian building. This garden is known for, in the morning, having all those people coming and doing some exercise, mm -hmm. especially from the Chinese community, which is so, so they are coming here and practicing uh, some Chinese dance and, uh, and exercise that I really don't know, but it's pretty cute. And of course, during summertime, it's also a place for people to come and doing a picnic, just, um, yeah, just hanging there. And I will show you one of my favorite tree in Paris. It's just in this garden, it's over there. And it's a hazelnut tree. The one that is more than 120 years old. And what? it was planted at the time where this garden was made. And so we saw some buildings from Osmanian time. Yes. At the same time... So that is roughly the 1860s, right? Exactly. So at the same time, they're making a lot of squares, such as this one in Paris. And um, there is this uh, man called Alphon, and he's in charge of creating new parks, a new uh, part of green, let's say. Mm -hmm. yes. So this park was made during this time. And that was planted, you see, in... You have a little sign on this tree. I don't know if you can see well the tree itself, but, but a little sign telling you that this hazelnut tree, this noisetier, is planted, was planted in 1882. It's okay if you don't see the sign. Trust uh, us. <laughs> you can just see. Uh, so let's say, so this tree, yeah, it's one of the oldest tree we can find in Paris. Usually the tree is the last one. 80 years maximum because of the pollution, because, you know, of the oh. soil also, that is not great for trees. Uh, but this one is one of the few resistance and uh, we have hundreds of trees like that that are called Arbre Remarquable and so the remarkable trees uh, all around Paris so in here you have this one but this park used to be 
a long time ago, I'm talking the 12th century, this used to be the place where the Templars, the Knights of Templars, and to be the ones that are uh, fighting during the Crusades and going to Jerusalem, this is where they had their fortress. So that's why this square is called Square du Temple for the Templars. So you have to imagine them uh, with their long white coat with the red, red cross, cross yes. And, uh, and the sword and the horses and the women. So that's why the whole area is named the Temple. temple. Exactly. The metro station here is called Temple. Exactly. We walked by Rue du Temple. And I will show you, just uh, after I will show you, where they had the dungeon. And the dungeon was at the same time a prison and a place to keep the treasure. Because of course the Templars Ooh. were very rich and uh, I can tell you... I see, I see a theme in this, uh, in this video, Marie. It's yes? gold and trees. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, that's my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was hoping. My two favorite things. Though. I was yeah. hoping you would say it. <laughs> now I'm going to show you what is um, so what Alphonse made. So this man that created parks in Paris, he wanted a fake nature, let's say, to, to come here. So that's why you have a crazy little, a mini waterfall at the end. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe we can get yeah, closer to that. But on the way, we'll say hello to our. Uh, so we have some ducks also saying hello. Hello. Um, those ducks are not European kinds. They are coming from Asia. Okay. Uh, and apparently, apparently, that's the guy from the garden who told me that. They taste um, good. No, don't. Sorry. Oh my God, no. I'm, I'm not eating any of those, of course. Um, so apparently only one was there at first. Uh, and um, it's kind of a tradition to give for a birthday or a wedding. It's kind of a tradition to give uh, like a mini duck. Uh -huh. Uh, apparently in this part of China and when they want to get rid of them it's like the turtles you know you get rid of them in the river same thing for the ducks so one came here then maybe a second one because now there is so many of them so they just that's their home now so you you, you can't do a foie gras with these ones come on that's all I'm sorry I'm hungry <laughs> Eat a pigeon, do like Hemingway. Apparently, he was doing that when he was very hungry. So like, like, what do you say? That no ducks, but <laughs> pigeons. Yeah, <laughs> this is a great year. <laughs> and behind this little town. Let me show some other friends. <laughs> Hello, you. So, you're coming all the way from China? You're doing an interview of ducks? I'm trying, but they don't want to answer. Yeah. I understand. I have a mask. I have a mask on my face, so I look weird. <laughs> The Mairie du Troisième, that is the So that city is hall. the big building behind? Yes, the city hall of the third district, which is now, since only this year, this is now the mayor the, 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 of the center of Paris. So oh, that, that is important because you guys probably don't follow French politics as well. Yeah. Uh, so what, what has changed? So before each arrondissement, had their own city hall where the weddings happen, where you do your administrative papers and all that. So that means there were 20 town 20 halls in Paris. All over. Plus one for the entire city. And one in the middle that you know as Hôtel de Ville. Yes. That is right in the middle by Notre Dame. And this uh -huh. is where the mayor of Paris is. And she is uh, over there. She's been re-elected in uh, yeah, June. Anne Hidalgo is, is, uh, is again uh, our mayor. And she's an ecologist, but we can talk about her later. Uh, but what, what has happened for the central neighborhoods? So here now, they concentrate, like they, they didn't want those 20 districts to always, let's say, have those, you know, yeah, problems fight. in between. So they just wanted to reunite them and they choose, they elected which building could hold the central Paris. So one, two, three and four. So the fourth, fourth first district, th fourth first district are now... So they are all now here, which means, so this is one of the most important places for Paris because it's kind of concentrating all the power for of, the fourth, of the central Paris. For the fourth, yeah, first district. So this is still a place where you can get uh, a wedding. Actually, the very first gay wedding that was celebrated in Paris was celebrated by the mayor here. Makes sense because this is also not very far from the gay you know. for the, from the gay district. Exactly. Yeah. And there is another building I want you to see, and we can maybe have a quick look over there. Sure, let's um, go there. Just behind this park. But We're so happy to be out and walking and yes. seeing a bit of nature and our friends the ducks who apparently are being quite friends with the pigeons too. So I won't eat a pigeon either. So <laughs> this park is also um, preserved for biodiversity so you cannot touch anything. Uh, they really let all the insects 
and all the animals that wants to stay for a while, they will yeah, they just let them do that. Yes, also the, the city of Paris has decided to stop using pesticides yes. for all the gardening. Yes. So we're becoming a more and more eco-friendly city. Yeah, especially for the sparrows because they are eating insects. And so if you kill the insects, then you kill the sparrows and then you have no birds, which is a shame. So yes, that's, uh, we decided to do something about it. So, so we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to the side of the third of the central Paris town hall. Now Maïs told us that there is one town hall for all four of them. Thank you. We're leaving the little uh, garden, the Square du Temple, and we see yes. something that looks like a, a factory or... Yeah, it does look like a factory. Um, it's called Le Carreau du Temple, so the square of the temple. And Here we go again. To be a place for market, for food market all the time. <laughs> Now it's completely different. This place is used for sports, uh, any exhibitions, art fairs. Uh, Sometimes you have, I don't know, some ballet dancing here. So it could be really epic. In my but case, I'm doing yoga here, for example. So nice. That's, uh, that's the kind of thing. Although it seems a very rigid structure for doing yoga, but... Um, actually, what you're looking at is just the empty amphitheater, but then you have all the rooms that are To the side. And when you go under one of the rooms, you can uh, see some walls that are from the 14th, 15th century. But... You're kidding me? Yeah. So it's not entirely a, no, no, an industrial structure. structure? No, no, under, it's a, it's a mix of modern and old stones. So. That's and pretty cool. And old stones, I will show you. Oh, no we like old stones in yes. this video. <laughs> <laughs> I will show you where the Templars were holding their treasures. Okay, let's go. So they were taking the fortune of people, keeping that safe, while the person was doing its pilgrimage or crusade, depending. So imagining someone letting all his stuff in Paris in charge, uh, in the hands of the Templars, going all the way to Jerusalem. At one point, maybe he will die, and what is left goes straight to the treasure of the Templars. So, so they got rich. <laughs> they got so rich. So with the years passing, they had this, they accumulate this amazing fortune. And here it was, so you have to have to have a little imagination. Here you had a massive tower and that was the tower of the Templars, so the Donjon du Temple. The Donjon du Temple, and yeah, the keep of the Temple. The floor, I will show you here, for example, you have this little thing. If you follow them, it will just draw Yeah, we shape. can see around, so that was... So oh yes, so it's, it's, it's not just a circle, it's much bigger. So I will go all the way so you can see the, the size. So to here. And uh, I'm walking back to the other extremity. So that... So this is all the dungeon. Wow. Yeah, that was very large. So... I'm going to show you another thing about it. So that was imagine, huge. Yeah, it's huge. So imagine big walls, very, yeah, very safe. This is also where we decided to keep two famous prisoners. You can recognize maybe here Louis the Sixteenth. Louis the Sixteenth, so our last king during the French Revolution, the one that lost his head, unfortunately, by the guillotine. Yeah. So Louis the Sixteenth and his wife Marie Antoinette were here as prisoners, you see, from August 1792. And they stayed here, and that was impossible conditions for them. So you have to imagine having these gloomy uh, cells, they couldn't see each other, they were uh, in each one of them, were in different cells. So it was the most horrific conditions for prisoners, not I mean, they are the king and, and the queen of France, and so you can imagine having, yeah, this condition is, that's not a great option. And then she was in conciergerie. Maybe some of you knows conciergerie just by uh, the uh, Sainte-Chapelle on Ile de la Cité. A quick thing, because you see this is 1792. The storming of the Bastille happened three years before that. Yes. So it means that in the meantime, there has been lots of changes. There was an attempt to have to keep the king and have a constitution, uh, but that did not work well. There was a war between France and most of other European monarchies, uh, which ended up as a success 
four thrones and it was then considered that the king became useless and so the first republic the first french republic started uh, a few weeks after the king was imprisoned so the, the revolution is not just one event but it's actually uh, over the years and there's also the daughter of marie antoinette and yes with the 16 that was imprisoned here and she became known as the orphan of the temple the both her parents uh, had been executed yeah and she she uh, she survived she was actually traded for uh, as a prisoner with austria since her mother was originally from austria and france was at war with austria so she was traded against uh, important french um, republicans that means french soldiers fighting for the republic who were imprisoned in austria and so she survived uh, this way and she died she was 60 something or even yeah. 70 something and also she is the one who gave some of her beautiful jewelry to i mean that we have in the loop i don't know if she gave them but let's say we can see a beautiful yeah. jewelry in the loop and now we are in front of Mary the troisième arrondissement and you can see the name of the mayor but here also french republic and with our motto so liberté égalité fraternité the french french motto just on each city hall here and if we continue we're gonna get to rue de bretagne my favorite street rue de bretagne is your favorite because you are from bretagne ah I, uh, yeah uh, that could be but it's not just that uh, so yeah bretagne uh, being this amazing region much better than Pays basque where it is from uh, I, I won't comment no, on no, that no. i won't comment <laughs> I'm this kidding. No, Brittany, so it's it's way of the west of france so it's true that bretagne is a great region but Rue de Bretagne is also known for uh, cafes and chocolate maker and yes. also macaro, so that's why probably I love this street. So we're gonna we, when we started uh, My Private Paris, we, we started with a, a food tour in the in the streets of yes. Bretagne. Yes, that was one of the first tours we were making. We made a video with uh, a German TV. Yes, uh, that is <laughs> true. <laughs> so we started like that. So there is Rue de Bretagne, I will show you how it looks. Food shops are considered as uh, essential produces, obviously, so they're open, but you cannot eat on site, so it's only takeaway. Yes. So it makes sense for an ice cream. I don't know if it, November makes sense for an ice cream, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, why, you know, why, not? why not? You're right. Maybe you want more chocolates. Voila, that. now we're talking. <laughs> this is one of the best. Uh, chocolate shop we have in Paris, Jean Paul Levin. That's one of my favorites. If you if you ever came in a tour with me, you, you would know that. <laughs> and I will show you many things you see here. Well, I want to stop, but I know that home won't let me. So. Well, have, have you have you finished your mondor from uh, last oh, week? It was delicious. <laughs> oh, you cannot imagine it was so good. Now I I want to do a raclette. It's another type of cheese. Mm, that, that, that gives me a good idea. Okay, guys, now we are entering in... Le Marché des Enfants Rouges. Le Marché des Enfants Rouges, which is one of the oldest food markets in Paris. That was built in the Middle Ages, but we have this structure that is a little bit more recent. As you can see, from the 19th century. And here, plenty of fruits and vegetable but also cheese and wine oyster fish whatever you're looking for and even japanese italian or lebanese food there's everything you need just down your building night that's quite fantastic yeah, I love it. and this is every day it's not like some open air market that are open only during the weekend for example but here it's really every day She's over there, I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to show you that. I don't know if you ever came here to eat, Bertrand, or it was maybe just for making your groceries? No, I was uh, actually because the, the stands that are closed are the one where you can eat on site. Because that's the good thing with this market is you can buy for home or also have a, a lunch on site. But yes, I was, uh, but I was mostly buying uh, to cook at home because I didn't have uh, uh, can I see something you might like? Brebis Basque. Ah, voila. So this is where I'm going to stay, guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of the tour with Marie. <laughs> and I'll try to uh, eat my Basque cheese. So the sheep, 
cheese um, for yes. beef. And as you can see, we have plenty of cheeses. Some people say you don't have 365, you know, types no, of cheeses. No, it's more. It's more than it's that. Much more. We have more than one cheese a day. Look at this selection, and that's just here, just in one tiny stall. We have that many cheeses, and they are mostly French. Marie, you're showing me. You're showing me ducks. You're showing me cheeses. And you're showing me chocolates. We need to stop. You know what? This is a torture. We can, we can Well, we'll have an hour, so... Let's see, they are... Buongiorno! 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 We are even speaking in Italian, so it's really... I'm sure he has watched last week's video where you were saying Italian food is always a good option. Ah! So he's trying to have you... Uh, <laughs> Sure. Okay. Tonight it's very quiet. People are not eating here today, but usually those are pretty full. And yes, that's a great place to get some wine as well. Yeah, wine in a box though. But that's becoming more popular with organic wines uh, in boxes. It's uh, organic becoming... wine in the boxes. Yeah. Don't buy that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we're back on the Rue de Bretagne. Uh, I have to tell you, I have a confession to make. So, I do love macaron, and I always tell my clients when they come in Paris, I always tell them you should make the test between La Durée macaron and Pierre Hermé macaron. But they usually, those are two brands of delicious macaron, but they are not in the same neighborhood, usually. Usually, Unless but. You're coming on Rue de Bretagne, then you will have both of them just a block away. So why not doing this experiment right now? So I'm going to get Ooh, a macaron of course. I'm going to get a macaron diarame and we have to taste those two and to decide finally which is the best. Okay? Let's let's walk in. Bonjour. Um, alors je vais vous en prendre deux euh un à la So there's a la durée now in your street. Bah oui, bien sûr. Of course. Of <laughs> best, course. best bakery. The time is, the, is the best street for all this food market. La durée. Oui. Au revoir. Merci. So what did you get? So I took one vanilla and one pistachio because you need to compare with basics, right? Yes. So then we're going to do the same in Pierre Hermé. I will take one vanilla and one pistachio and. You can try with me. So I don't know. Because Pierre Hermé is, is just around the corner. Just around the corner. Oh my so God. That's, that's why. So that's, that's the best. Also in between, we have nice boutiques of everything, so such as this one in the cafe. It's more and more organic also in this neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, it's known to be what we call bobo, uh, a ah. little bit. So for if it's the first time you hear this word, you have to learn it because bobo means bohemian and bourgeois at the same time. So we're going to come to that next. Um, so it's a contraction of both and it's true that Le Marais is typical of that so if you have a little bit of money um, you will decide to be in Le Marais because it's, it's chic, it's, it's cool, chic, it's artsy, it's, the, it's all the designers but at the same time it's not the Champs-Elysées, it's not something um, too, yeah, too grandiose, let's say it's something more simple so that's exactly what we're looking at. Like it's more human scale. Human scale, uh, a village spirit but with some access to art and beautiful food. Yay! So, that's probably why I'm here. And beautiful buildings. So, yeah, just right there, we're gonna reach the Hermé. So this is the Hermé now. I'm gonna hide that, of course. And bring it. Wow, 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 some more macaron. Marie is buying some more macaron for our test. Which flavor you are getting? Same ones, vanilla and pistachio. I think that's the best way to make a test. Perfect. I'm going to be excited. Yay! Oh, la, 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 la. I love this idea of, of a test. Marie, you've had a brilliant idea. They always include 
Oui, we won't be complaining. Merci, madame. So we choose in the third the best park that is just the, located in front of this amazing building here. The um, Musée Picasso. The Musée Picasso. So this is the best place for the ultimate battle between Pierre Hermé and La Durée. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da! So I have the pistachio and you have the vanilla. I have the vanilla flavor. Okay, let's do it. We have one of each each. Yeah. So let's do it. Allez. <laughs> Mm. Okay, this is pretty good. So this museum... Mm. No, maybe after. Oh, la, la, yeah. I, I'm sorry guys, I can't talk about anything else. In a minute. Or even talk. I mm. just want to eat these macarons. Yeah, you're right. So that was the vanilla, I think. Mm. Let's try the other one. Mm. Interesting. I think a bit less sweet. This one. Mm. It's funny, I, in my mind I would say, you know, Pierre Hermé is the best of the best, but I think today I kind of prefer the La Durée. So, yes. Oh, yeah. And to me, I think in the La Durée one, you, f you feel the vanilla very much, mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe a little bit too much, uh -huh. while it's more subtle in the Pierre Hermé. I think it's the same for me. Like, just this one is really pistachio, like the taste is really strong, but this one will be a bit, yeah, softer probably. So it's, mm. we draw at one point each. It's you, hard, it's hard to choose. I mean, even with that, I cannot decide. We are still, you know, both really good for different reasons. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. We're going to finish the video here and go buy some more. Okay. <laughs> if you guys want us to keep buying some more macarons, you know what you got to do. <laughs> you have a link right down the video where you can support uh, our tours. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so for much. being here today. Yes. We'll see you next week. Yeah. In the 4th district? In the 4th district and maybe we can start because this is kind of in between the 3rd and the 3rd, so uh, the 3rd and the 4th. So maybe we can start again uh, here in From Music here Picasso. next week. That could Some be a good idea. <laughs> okay guys, thank you so bye -bye. much. See you, bye bye. Mm.